Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Student Tutorial Unit 3 Specialist Mathematics with Inspire, TI Inspire webinar this evening. Um, in tonight's webinar, we'll be looking at numerical methods for solving DEs, and I'll be your host, James Mott. Today with us is my good friends, Rosina and Stephen, and they'll be here to answer any questions that you have throughout tonight's webinar. So if you do have questions, please put them in the chat, and they'll get back to you. So in tonight's webinar, we'll be looking at our direction fields and slope fields. We're looking at how to sketch them using CAS, understanding what Euler's method is and how to perform it on CAS both algebraically and graphically. And then throughout the webinar, we're looking at some exam style questions and seeing how we can use CAS to tackle them efficiently. So far in the story with specialist mathematics, we've looked at some integration techniques where we've integrated a wide variety of different um, expressions. However, it's not always possible to solve, um, so it's not always possible to integrate um, expression or to solve a differential equation analytically using our techniques we've covered so far in the course. So for example, if we were given something like sine x squared or e to the power of x squared and ask to integrate those using our techniques, um, we'd soon find out that we, we wouldn't have much success with that. So if we were to actually solve these or find a solution to these particular integrals, what we can do instead is use graphical or numerical methods to approximate the solutions to these integrals or DEs. So one such approach is to use direction, direction fields or more commonly called slope fields. So these guys give visual solutions for DEs. So when we're presented with a differential equation, dy dx, this will tell us about the gradient at a point to a curve and when we're actually given a particular point, we can then look at a particular solution curve from the slope field, and we'll see that in action. So we might be given um, a very simple DE, dy dx is equal to 1 over x. Now we know that, that um, the solution to that particular differential equation is going to be something like a log. So on the right-hand side here, all these dashes in our Cartesian plane, this is what we refer to as a slope field. So we can kind of see from here, from the slope field, that if we were to draw along all these, these dashes, these ticks, we'd, we can kind of see there that we would get the graph of a log. So where this comes about is that all these dashes in the plane, these are like mini tangent lines. And the way we get these, these uh, little tangent lines is from the differential equation. So if we were to look at x equals one, sub that in, then that tells us that our gradient for x equals 1 is equal to 1. Likewise, if we sub in x equals 2, then our gradient will be given by a half. So wherever the value of uh, x is equal to 1, we can think about along there that our little, little tangent lines drawn along there, all those gradients are equal to 1. And likewise, if we look at the points of the plane where x is equal to 2, then all those tangent lines there will be so we'll have a gradient of a half. And likewise, if we're going to three and to four, our gradients will be a third and a fourth correspondingly. Now, whilst we can kind of see that, um, I guess, approximation there, what we'd like to be able to do is to sketch the slope field, and then we'll see throughout the course of the webinar how we can actually go about generating um, a curve like this in the slope field. So to actually sketch a slope field, First up, we want to open a graph page, and then we'll be going into the graph entry edit section, and then using the differential equation template to sketch our slope field. So an exam style question that we might see is what we, we might be actually given a slope field, such as the one here, and asked to think about which differential equation could correspond to the slope field actually given to us. So what we can do is we can open up a graph page, and then to actually get up our slope field, what we're going to do is go to Menu, Graph Entry Edit, and then we can go all the way down the bottom to sketch a differential equation. Now, you might find that a little bit tedious on the handheld, so what you can do is once you're in that option there, if you press the up button on your keypad, it'll take you straight to the DFEC um, option there. All right. So if we go ahead and try the first option there, we're saying dy dx is equal to negative y over x. We can type that in. Oops. 
Sorry about that. At the moment, nothing's quite working there. The reason being is because if we actually look at the input here, what this is saying is y2 dashed is equal to something. So because it's y2, when we ever have, whenever we enter and type in a y term, we need to put in y2 here, which corresponds to y2 dashed. Right. So once we do that, we can see now our, our slope field is being generated. And then we look at this, we compare it to the one given to us, and it doesn't quite look all that right. So we can try a next option, and to go back to that sort of template, we can press tab, go up, we can get rid of that work. Let's try the next option for sine x. And once again, um, we're seeing that it doesn't quite match up the graph given to us, so we can keep trying ahead. Again, pressing tab, Let's try our log now. So log E, control E of the X, bring up LN. Now, once again, we've got log E of Y, but remember, if we have Y2 dashed, we need to enter in Y2. Now, the top half looks pretty good, but unfortunately, the bottom half isn't showing, so that's not quite the right DE there. We can keep going ahead and trying our options, but if we strategically try option number, so option E, and we want Y2, we're going to square that. And that's looking pretty similar to the actual slope field presented to us. So that's how we go about sketching slope fields. And again, that's going through menu, graph entry edit, and defec. And we'll be coming back to that throughout the course of the webinar as well. Now, the other way we can go about solving um, DEs numerically is using Euler's method. Now, Euler's method is more of a numerical way to approximate solutions to um, a differential equation. So with this, we are given the differential equation. Therefore, we know the gradient at any point. So what we can do, we can approximate the Y values by taking small steps along some tangent lines. So imagine now, in this, setup, in this setup here, the blue curve, let's pretend that's our actual solution there, and we've got a DE that we don't quite know how to solve. Now, we might be given a point, since the starting point, x1, y1. We're given the differential equation, dy dx, and we know that that's the gradient. Now, we think back to good old year nine. We know the gradient is given by a rise over run. So the question we can think about now is how is it that we can go from a point x1, y1, to a new point x2, y2. So what we can do is, if we think about our friend rise over run, we can take some sort of step in the x direction, and we'll call it h. Now, we know how far we are going to run, but the question is now how far do we rise? So if we think about the, that expression there, gradient is equal to rise over run, we can rearrange that to say that the rise is given by the run times m, the gradient. And we know the run, we're just going, going to call that h. And the gradient, well, we know the gradient of the curve and the point of the plane at this point x1, y1. And that's just given by the, our DE evaluated at the point x1. So now we know how much we are rising by is given by this expression here h times the derivative at our initial point x1. So now our value for y2, this coordinate here, is given by the amount we arose by plus the initial y value that we started with, y1. So this, this total height is the red length, which is y1, plus the dashed height there, which is how much we run, so how much we rise. And we can keep doing that process to go from y2, so x2, y2, to x3, y3, and likewise to x4, y4. We can keep repeating that process to generate all these points, and that allows us to generate these approximate solutions to the actual curve, which we might know not, we might not know how to actually generate uh, through integration techniques. On the 
the right hand side here is just another sort of algebraic way of deriving this process. Um, so what we're saying here is that rise over run, when the points are really close together, that's approximately the gradient as we sort of saw from first principles and methods. What we're saying here is that we're stepping in some direction h, so some length h in the x direction. So delta x, that's just going to be x2 minus x1. And with a bit of rearranging there, we get x2 is equal to x1 plus h. Then we can sub this guy into our um, uh, initial equation here with the difference in y over the difference in x. And that's just simply y2 minus y1 over h is approximately the gradient. And then we can then rearrange this guy to get y2 is equal to y1 plus h times the derivative. But I feel that this, this graphical approach is probably a more intuitive way. Now we can keep repeating that to generate as z x3, y3, and x4, y4. And as we do that, we'll see some sort of pattern. And eventually as we do that more and more times, we'll see these results here, which what we're doing is we're just simply taking the same step in the x direction each time. So for every single new point that we're generating, it's just simply the old points plus this step in the x direction. And then as we kind of saw with that red line there and the dashed line, to get the new height, it's just simply the old height plus the amount that we rose by. Now, where this becomes particularly useful is that at the moment, this blue curve is some sort of analytical solution that let's say we don't know how to get. And these red points here are the approximate solutions generated by Euler's method. Now, if we think back to methods and think about first principles of differentiation, we saw that as h gets smaller and smaller, we're getting a better and better approximation to um, the slope of the curve. So similar to here, as we decrease the value of h, the amount we're stepping in the x direction, we're noticing that the actual approximations to our actual solution are getting better and better key takeaway here is that as our h value gets smaller and smaller, our numerical approximations are getting better and better to an actual solution to the differential equation. Right, so quite often, we actually don't know what this blue curve is. So we are trying to generate a red curve that um, is a, a good fit for the blue curve itself. Now, there are two ways to do this on CAS. There's the Euler commands in the library, which we'll go through. Um, and we'll also use slope fields to exploit Euler's method as well, which is, I think, personally, a, the easier way to do it um, on CAS to get our numerical solutions. So here we go. Another example of question, we're given a DE, in this case here, dy dx is equal to sine x over y. And we're given some sort of initial condition or boundary condition. Well, what this is saying is that when x is equal to 1, our y value is equal to 1. We're being asked to use Euler's method for the step size of 0.1. And we want to know when x is equal to 1.4, what's the y value equal to? Correct to three decimal places. So just like with any sort of exam question, we want to try and elicit the key information in the question. What we've got here is we've got the DE. We've got our initial x, our initial y. Our step size, we're told is 0.1, and we want to get y4. So to use Euler's commands on CAS, what we can do, and it's quite a lengthy one, but what we can do is on a calculator page, we can get it up by using, uh, or by pressing the, the book button here, the catalog, and then if we press E on our keypad, it'll take us to the E section, and we can scroll down and eventually find our Euler command there. So the reason why I've typed it out is because it is quite a lengthy command. And if you do feel that you want to use this, um, it is probably recommended that you do write it in your bound reference with maybe an example or two. So what we need to do, first of all, is type in the expression for our DE, which from a key information was sine x over y. Next bit, 
the variable. So our variable here um, is x, comma, and dependent variable is y, because y depends on x. Now, next bit, we've got these curly brackets here. Now, to enter in these curly brackets, we're going to press control and then the right open bracket. And next, what we're saying here is that what's the initial x value and what's the last x value? So initially, we're starting at one. And then if we think back to the question, we had y of 1.4. So 1.4 is our last x value. So we'll type that in, comma, one comma 1.4. Now we get out of that. Next bit, we put the comma dependent variable zero. So what that's saying is what's our initial y value? And the key information, our initial y value was one. And then lastly, the variable step size. So in this case here, our h value was 0 0.1. So we'll type that in. And what this is generating for us is every single point up until we get to when x is 1.4 and that approximated answer with 1.32 there. So all this method via the uh, calculator page is a nice one in that it generates every single step along the way to our final answer. Um, but if we just want the final answer, what we can actually do is use the graph page to generate that. And before we do that, as I said, with Euler's, um, if you do like this method, um, it is probably best recommended that you put in your bound reference and maybe give me an example of how to use it. So when you tackle assessment, you've got a fair idea of how to use this command. But if you want to use the graphs page, what we can do is to sketch, first of all, a slope field. So we saw last time to sketch these guys, we're going to go to menu, graph entry edit, and then all the way to the effect. Now our equation was sine x over y1. And remember, if we've got y1 dash, we need to put y1 in here. Now, down the bottom here, these are our initial conditions. So, in the question, we had that when x was 1, our y value was 1 as well. So, we can sketch that. This is our particular solution curve because we've got our initial information there. So, what we can do now is to actually get these, these points here. We can go to Menu and then go to Trace and Graph Trace. This allows us to generate the points on the curves. So if we wanted, say, x equal to 1 on our keypad, we could hit 1 and press Enter, and it'll take us to our, it'll take us to our initial point. Now, because we wanted what happens at x equal to 1.4, again, on our keypad, we can type in 1.4 and press Enter, and it'll take us straight to that y value there that we're after. Now, at the moment, it's only showing it to two decimal places. So if the options in the multiple choice clearly have just 1.32 as an answer, then it's looking good. But if the third decimal place needs to be shown, what we can do is to change the amount of decimal places that are shown on the, on the calculator, on this graph page. And the way to do that is we can go to Menu. And in the settings, we can now change that from a float 3 to a float 4. So now the decimal place is showing as 1.324, which is a really clean and efficient way of getting that um, final answer there. Okay. So now this question here was the one in the poll. So what we've got here is we've got a DE that has um, a numerical solution of one point, so one and three, and we want to know which of these points also is a solution, a numerical solution, this differential equation. So once again, we can now sketch a slope field. So in menu, graph entry edit, differential equation, we're gonna sketch negative y1, because remember we've got y1 dashed over here. So negative y1 over x, and we've got this particular solution 
of, of this particular point of one and three. So down here, we can type in one and three for our X and Y values. And then we're getting our whole slope field, but we're getting this particular solution curve that we are interested in now. Okay. Now, to actually see these coordinates, like before, we're gonna to go to graph trace. So in the menu, trace, graph trace. All right. So if we now type in one and press enter, that takes us to our initial coordinate given to us. But we can go ahead and try these different options to see which one actually lies on this particular curve. So if we type in 0 0.7, we can see that those Y values of 4.125, that doesn't quite match up with the one given to us in the question. We can try the next one, 1.5, and press enter. Again, not quite there, 1.9 doesn't quite match up with 2.0. If we type in 1.9 and press enter, and then that one neatly matches up with option C. So the correct answer there to the poll was option C, 1.9 and 1.5. So that's it for tonight's webinar. Um, if you do have questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Uh, we'll be around till six to answer any questions that you do have. And once again, my sincerest apologies for my CAS crashing. Um, but thank you for attending tonight's webinar and best of luck for your studies ahead.